Hey guys, it's TTL back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the first of the vendor cards that we've seen of the GTX 750 Ti. The 750 Ti, in case you didn't know, is the first Kepler card that uh, Nvidia have released and uh, like I said, this is the first custom one that we've seen and it is, I'll get it in the right place, a custom PCB as well. Uh, it's not the same as the reference one, I'm just zooming you in, I need to get it in the right place. Actually, a really difficult angle for me to see what to uh, tell you at the minute. Anyway, so it's the Asus Direct CU2 version that we've got. Its uh, base clock is 1072 megahertz, which is 52 megahertz overstock, and then the boost is 1150 megahertz, 640 CUDA cores, the memory clock is uh, 1350, which is 5400 effective. It's a 128-bit memory interface. It will do up to 2560 by 1600 resolution. Um, if we have a look on the back, we can see that we've got two DVIs, a HDMI, and probably for the first time in about two years, that's a uh, normal uh, sort of like D-sub output, 15-pin D-sub output. So, I've, like I said, I've not seen one of those in a long time, but I guess it is one of the lower-ended cards. But uh, direct CU2, so it's got the very kind of uh, familiar-looking Asus cooler. They say that the uh, fans are dustproof. Um, I wouldn't take them completely on their word about that. It probably helps with dust, maybe, but I very much doubt whether they'll ever get you know, stuck with dust. Um, it has got a very large alley heatsink uh, built in. I'm hoping that you can see it there. The camera's, it, I can't see it very well. The camera's on an angle, so I can only really see a bit of silver and then lots of shadows. Um, but it comes out the back, as you can see there. It is literally a huge chunk of alley, which then gets bolted down onto the core. Um, and then obviously the fans blow over it. Oh, let's wait on fan blow over it and then the heat gets dissipated. I can tell it's a custom PCB because uh, on the uh, reference card, there were some uh, pin points up here that you could fit a six pin um, PCI Express connector. But sadly, with this one, which I find kind of strange, the six pins right up near the PCI bracket. Now I guess if you were using an ITX board, because this is quite small, it may not matter too much. Um, or you know an MATX board and your power supply was directly under it but this is certainly not something that we've got used to with uh, like performance ATX cases because you end up needing to you know drag the um, the connector in the only thing that you know they've put it up here uh, there's no SLI connector or anything so it's not too bad um, now they say the uh, the fans dual fans increase thermal efficiency well, yeah, we're pretty good with that. Um, what they've also said is uh, the super alloys, because there's uh, caps and choke shoes on this, help with the uh, power. And I'm just kind of like skipping through my little notes that I've got to the left-hand side. Um, you can use the Asus GPU tweak if you want to try overclocking it, and it's also got GPU tweak streaming as well. Um, but an 1150 boost clock is pretty good. It'd be interesting to see if it does go up any further. Now, one thing I can say is we are going to be doing a full review on this in the not too distant future on the uh, OC3D website, but this is just our kind of first look to show you all the, the kind of Gucci-ness of the card, and then uh, we'll, be, we'll be back later on with the uh, full review and testing. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll be back with uh, more kind of first looks and nerd porny type overviews of hardware in the not too distant future and I can say that I have some rather rather interesting stuff due in within the next uh, few weeks but in the essence of trying to keep the uh, video nice and short this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you out.